there. Glad you could make it. You know, in geometry, it's sometimes useful to use algebraic expressions. Now, just in case you're a bit rusty on what that term means, here are some examples of algebraic expressions. So, let's see how we might use expressions like these to describe some properties of geometric figures. Check out this hexagon. A hexagon has six sides, remember? If we started connecting the vertices, suppose we wanted to know how many triangles could be formed, assuming that none of the triangles can overlap. Well, let's choose one vertex as a starting point and connect it to as many other vertices as possible. Let's count the triangles. So, there you go. In a hexagon, there will be four non-overlapping triangles. How about if we try the same thing for a ten-sided polygon? That's a decagon, remember? Well, to get the total number of triangles, let's do the same thing. Choose a vertex, connect it to as many other vertices as we can, and then count the triangles. And what do we have? Well, it looks like a ten-sided figure has eight triangles. Now maybe you saw the start of a pattern there. Six sides, four triangles. Ten sides, eight triangles. So let's put that into a table. We'll put the number of sides on the left and the number of triangles on the right. Now let's fill in some end values representing different polygons. Here's a quadrilateral, a pentagon, a hexagon, and let's put in a few more. Now remember, we've already counted the triangles for the hexagon and decagon. So let's place those values into the table now. Quadrilateral and pentagon? Let's see. That'd be two triangles here, and three triangles here. And if we did the remaining polygon, it would look like this. So looking at the table, can you come up with an algebraic expression for the number of triangles in an n-sided polygon? Could it be n minus 2? Yep, that's it. The correct algebraic expression is n minus 2. Okay, let's try a different problem. This one has to do with degrees. You know that the sum of the angle measures in a triangle is 180 degrees, right? And in a quadrilateral, there's 360 degrees. Suppose you wanted an expression for the sum of the angle measures for any polygon. Well, if the polygon has n sides, then remembering back from the table we just did, it contains n minus 2 triangles. And since each triangle contains 180 degrees, you'd have n minus 2 of those 180 degree figures. Written mathematically, it would be the quantity n minus 2 times 180. And there it is. An algebraic expression for the sum of the angle measures in any polygon, where n equals the number of sides. Again, that's any polygon. For example, let's look at a 100-sided polygon. I know, but let's do it anyway. You just substitute 100 in place of the n and get... 17,640. That's a lot of degrees. And it was that algebraic expression that allowed us to come up with that answer. Here comes the last one. This time, let's see if we can develop an expression for the number of diagonals at any one vertex of a polygon. So let's take a look at an octagon this time. And let's choose a vertex, say B. Now, if I want all the diagonals at B, they would have to connect to D, E, F, G, or H. Because from point B, there are three vertices that you can't connect to if you want a diagonal. The ones on either side and itself. Since the octagon has eight vertices, that means that at each vertex you could draw a total of eight minus three, or five diagonals. Same thing for a decagon. From any vertex, there are three vertices that you can't connect to if you want a diagonal. 
the ones on either side, and itself. So for a 10-sided figure, you'd have 10 minus 3, or 7 <laughs> diagonals at each vertex. So following that pattern, what if you had n sides, which means n vertices, how many diagonals at each vertex? Well, because of the 3 that you can't go to, that would be a total of n minus 3. So what does that expression n minus 3 represent? It's the number of diagonals at each vertex of a polygon. So you remember that 100-sided polygon we looked at? What if I asked how many diagonals were at each vertex? Did I hear 97? You got it. 100 minus 3 gives you 97. That's all there is to it. Until next time. Remember, algebraic expressions can really help in describing properties of geometric figures.